Hey guys, it's Techmaster2133 here again today, and I have some new stuff to show you. Um, I recently picked up this Dell Optiflex GX270, not the 280, um, from a guy that I know. He's one of my friend's dads, he's pretty cool. And uh, he sold them. Hey guys, it's Techmaster2133 here today, and I got some new stuff to show you. Um, I recently picked up this Dell Optiplex GX270, two of them actually, uh, they're both pretty much exactly the same, one's a more base model, um, this one, however, does come, well it did, anyway, it removed some of the stuff, has the floppy drive that is no longer there, and this one had a, um, compact disc rewritable slash DVD-ROM drive, the other one is just a standard CD-ROM drive. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, I like to call these machines the capacitor toaster ovens because that's practically what they are. They run quite hot on the internals. Um, as you can see, this one has the PS2 and plenty of USB ports. A lot of these that I see are USB only now. So that was interesting. Takes the half height low profile graphics cards. Let's crack it open. This one, the capacitors all right here are in fine shape and these ones usually toast out and bulge as well as the ones underneath the CPU cool right there usually bulge out and leak and the system dies from just the sheer heat of the Pentium 4. This one is the 533 MHz front side bus model. It is a 2.8 GHz non hyper threaded Pentium 4. It has a half a gig of two matching RAM sticks, half a gig of DDR RAM running in dual channel and the system is actually really snappy for uh, only a half a gig of RAM I think it's because they're matching sticks and it's in dual channel it has a 160 watt um, Dell power supply which runs extremely hot um, it gets very very warm to the touch I don't think this I don't know if this fan is thermally controlled I know it works and it pulls there but it pulls air from the inside of the system which just makes this get incredibly warm because this is a really bad design they should have some sort of guard here going straight to this so no air can just sit here in the system and heat it up which is exactly what these models do and it makes them die very early on has a uh, laptop style DVD-ROM drive and a 40 gig Western digital, Western digital drive but uh, I'm not going to start them up today because in the other room in my with my editing PC I'm having some major issues with blue screens and that sort of thing I think it's a failing RAM stick because um, one's a 4 gig stick of Corsair Vengeance 1600 megahertz and the other stick is just a generic 2 gig DDR3 um, 1333 stick that's overclocked 1600 megahertz and it has been for over a year now so I wouldn't doubt that that's starting to fail because it has no cooler on it uh, it doesn't seem to get very warm but you never know but uh, yeah so that's this first system it does come with the built-in internal speaker audio so I don't need speakers with the system um, I would like to put in a low profile AGP graphics card but with this system and the 160 watt power supply that already runs like the sun I'd rather not make it any hotter and increase the system load so I'm not gonna do that but as you can see the system is very clean uh, there's no dust to speak of I don't think the system was used heavily at all but uh, that's it for this computer. Let me go get the other one. Um, 
The other computer is another one of these, like I said before, but I had some changes done, so it is no longer in this case. I'll be right back. Okay, so I am fairly certain that any of you who watch any of my other videos, this case will look quite familiar to you. This was the case that housed the Pentium 3 gaming PC that I had, still have. It's just out of its uh, case right now on its motherboard tray. And I'll be showing you what I'm thinking about doing with that later on, if it works. Anyway, this is the other Optiplex GX280 machine now. This one, believe it or not, it's a 2.4 Pentium 4, but it's an 800 megahertz front side bus and it's hyper threaded. So I chose to lose about 400 megahertz and gain the hyper threading than to go with the um, 2.8 gigahertz machine with the 533 megahertz front side bus with no hyper threading. And this one feels a lot snappier than the 2.8, believe it or not. So let's go ahead, spin it around, and crack it open and show you what I've done. Now I probably will have to put down the camera because this takes two hands. So one second. A nice lovely view at the blinds. Alrighty. So, here you can see, and the main reason why I did this is because I don't use the Pentium 3 too often, and I wanted a decent Pentium 4 machine um, for whatever I decided to do with it. This thing is extremely quiet, um, and I'm basically using it for SoundCloud, uh, Netflix, and Hmm, basic gaming, really. Uh, just see what it would do. I have a Realtek 54 megasecond Wi-Fi card in here, which is kind of pointless because my network, it's not even using half my network. I have 126 megabyte a second internet. Uh, 126 down and 30 up. So it doesn't even tap into that which is annoying, it's fairly slow. Uh, it's got one gig of DDR RAM running in dual channel because I don't have any sticks bigger than 512 meg at the moment. Um, it's got a original 200 watt Dell power supply. Um, that's another reason why I moved this into here. I could not add this card into the small form factor case because number one I don't have the small form factor bracket anymore and number two um, I don't feel safe adding this card to a system with 160 watt power supply I know it won't take very much but um, that power supply already can cook an egg with as hot as it gets and the hot, as hot as that system gets so adding something that's just going to produce more heat is a bad idea. Um, up here we have the standard DVD-ROM drive and two fairly large um, for the time IDE drives. One is 120 gig uh, 5400 RPM and the other is 160 gig 7200 RPM. Uh, the one is I do believe a Mac store drive and the other one is a Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM drive and this system does relatively well I was very surprised um, I did move the built-in speaker over to it so it does have onboard sound and having this I got so used to the GX150 only having two USB 1.1 ports so having all of those USB ports and then the two in the front which I thought 
Um, when they were on the Pentium 3, they were USB 1.1, but now they function faster than USB 1.1, so I don't know if this motherboard just kind of upped them to 2.0 or what. So that was kind of nice. But anyway, guys, there will be separate videos on startups and, um, you know, tours of these machines to come. I'm not going to do them now because this video is probably already getting long. And I don't feel like it, quite honestly. I'm quite lazy right now. So, yeah, I'm kind of dealing with my main PC having issues, which I do believe is solved, hopefully. I'm rendering out another um, A2A Simulations Flight Simulator 10 video. And that should be up shortly, and then these will probably make it up before that. So, alright. Talk to you guys later.